Okay, in this tutorial I'm going to show you some of the most common ways that people use the calendar in Bright Alive. So let's get started. To find the calendar, the first thing you're going to do is to jump up to the top of the screen, the top menu bar, and choose or hover over the calendar option, and you'll see fitting room view, employee view, day view, week view, and month view. So let's jump into the fitting room view. When you jump into the fitting room view, you'll notice that each column is laid out by fitting room. And then at the top right hand corner, you have the calendar picker, the date picker, where you can choose to jump to any particular day, or you can just jump back and forth between days. If you'd like to, you can just hit the today button, and that'll take you back to the current day. When you're on the current day, the background of the calendar will be yellow. So if we look at the top right hand corner of the screen, you'll notice that we have a work schedule, notes, task, and smart book buttons. So let's look at what each one of those does. The work schedule will show you a list of every employee or every associate working that day, when they start and when they finish. The notes button will show you the notes that either a manager or anybody else has entered for that day. If you click the button, you can start typing in some notes. And then as soon as you save the notes, and there are notes for that day, the button will turn purple. That's going to be your indicator that you should review those notes for the day. The next one is the tasks. Tasks will show you all the tasks that are due that particular day. In this case, we don't have any tasks due. So we're going to jump over to the Smart Book button now. The Smart Book button is the easiest way to book an appointment in Bright Alive. After you set up your appointment types, your block schedule or your variable scheduling, the fitting rooms, and your staff members and which kind of appointments they can take, Bright Alive will take all that information and provide you with a simple list of appointments that are available for a particular day. Let's take a look at how that works. We're going to click on the Smart Book button and we're going to select Bridal Appointment. And right now it's showing us all the bridal appointments for the 4th of, of August. And we can see here that Fitting room one and two both have availabilities starting at different times because we've staggered our times. To book an appointment from the Smart Book popover, just click on Book Appointment and it'll pre fill everything on the pop up with what you've selected. Alternatively, you can just go over to the calendar, click on a spot, and the Add Appointment pop up will show up. Now, Bright Alive does let you book appointments outside of your block scheduling. So if you want to restrict your staff to only book during the block scheduling that you allow, encourage them to use the Smart Book button. So now that we have the Add Appointment window showing up, let's take a look at some of the fields on the screen. Obviously, you have your first name and last name. If you're adding an appointment for an existing contact, you will see the suggested names and phone numbers of people that are already in your system. Now, whenever a contact is added into the system, Bright Alive will first look for duplicates. And it looks for duplicates by first name, last name, and any one of the three phone numbers. If it finds a duplicate, it's going to prompt you. And then you'll just want to search for the matching contact in the system by typing in the last name enter a mobile number and you can see the little checkbox next to the mobile number indicates whether or not this person has opted in for text messaging so you may want to ask the person when you're on the phone with them or if they're booking via phone if they would like to receive a text message confirmation and you can set that up in Bright Alive if you'd like next we have the option of entering in home work phone numbers as also an email address if you don't enter an email address the contact will not receive any of the smart flows that get kicked off after adding an appointment. Then we have the event date. You may or may not get this information up front, how they heard about you, an appointment type, the date of the appointment, whether it's all day or not all day, a start and end time, the fitting room that this appointment will be, will be carried out in, and the associate who will be working with this person. Now, some people don't assign an associate before the contact comes in, and that's fine. You can just choose unassigned, and it'll stay in the unassigned category until somebody picks up that appointment for the day. Next, you have your colors. So as you change the associate, you can see how the colors change as well. 
This is just a visual indication of whose appointment it is on the calendar. You have the confirmed option, which lets you know whether or not this bride has confirmed the appointment by letting you know that she's going to come in. You can enter some appointment notes. And then you can also choose to go ahead and either save and close the appointment, save and open the contact, save and create another appointment, or just close it all together and cancel out. Let's go ahead and hit save and close. Now when you click on Add Appointment, Bridal Live is going to do a few checks behind the scenes. First, it's going to make sure that this time is a valid time for this employee to, to take an appointment. It will look whether or not she's working during that time. If she's not working during that time, it's going to check to see if you've allowed this employee to have appointments booked outside of their schedule. The second thing it's going to look for is to make sure that this employee can in fact work this appointment type. If you've gone in and configured your staff, you've probably gone in and told Bride Alive which types of appointments that this bride can handle. And lastly, it'll go it'll look at the fitting rooms and make sure that the fitting rooms are not booked during that time. When you hit save and close, you'll notice that the smart flows pop up. Now, we have told the system that we want to do a few things after we book a bridal appointment. The first thing we want to do is send an appointment confirmation email. Next, we want to go ahead and schedule a reminder email to go out 24 hours before the appointment date. We want to go ahead and send a text message confirmation as well. Not everybody will do this, but, you know, it's something that you can do. And then we also have an option which is not selected by default, which shows, uh, gives you the option of scheduling another appointment. If you select that option, the add appointment pop-up will show up, and you'll be able to book another follow-up appointment for that customer. So if we go ahead and hit process smart flows, we'll notice that we get the smart flow confirmation pop-up. And you'll see here one of the options is red. Uh, the, co the text message confirmation is red. And this is because the, the contact did not opt in to receive text messages. Had I opted them in on the add appointment window, they would have received a confirmation text message which they could have confirmed their appointment with. So let's go over to that appointment real quick. It was on Saturday. And here it is. And you can see that when we hover over the appointment, we have details about the appointment. The contact's name, the date or the time for the appointment, what type of appointment it is, when the bride's event date is, who's going to work with that person, and any notes that we've entered about this bride. If I click on the appointment to edit it, you can see that I have all the information about the appointment that I already um, entered in earlier. Um, you can see that the name and the phone numbers are disabled. You can jump over to the contact by clicking the little contact icon. And then all the details about the appointment are down along the right hand side. Now, when you're editing an appointment, you have a whole bunch of buttons across the bottom so that you can do certain actions with this appointment. One thing you're going to want to do is get in the habit of completing your appointments or marking them as no show or marking them as canceled. The point behind doing this is that you will be collecting information about what the outcomes of your booked appointments are. If they're completed, that means that you've worked with the bride. If they're a no-show, that means they just booked an appointment and never came into the store. If they're a canceled, it means they booked an appointment and they canceled the appointment and maybe they came back at a later time. You can also delete the appointment. You can send an email about the appointment, and you can also send a text message about the appointment as well. When you send emails from the appointment window, or text messages from the appointment window, you will have all the merge keys that you need to send an email successfully about that appointment. This is where you'll come if you want to send a confirmation email manually or a reminder email manually. You'll come to this screen because this is how Bride Alive will know which appointment you want to send the email about. You can also go ahead and choose the print button. Print will print a one page appointment sheet with all the information that you currently know about the bride. 
everything from her event date to the type of appointment she's coming in for, when she's coming in for it. A lot of folks like to print this out, um, but the best way really to print this out is as a bulk action from the appointment list screen, the search appointment screen. You can print all the appointment sheets for the day. And so uh, a lot of folks on a busy Friday night or for a busy Saturday morning as they're prepping the store for the day, they'll go into Bride Alive, they'll print out all their appointment sheets, and then what they'll do is just stick them up at front at the cash wrap area where the consultants can pick off the top of the uh, of the stack as the brides come in for the day. Now, if I were to change the appointment date and time, let's say bride called in, she wanted to book an appointment, then she called back five minutes later and wants to move it to a different time. So let's say she booked 1130 and she wants to move to noon. Well, we need to go ahead and reschedule uh, any text messages or confirmations that need to happen at that time as well. So the system automatically takes care of that for you. You can see here, you'll see a little confirmation message at the very top that says appointment saved successfully and any emails or text messages have been rescheduled if necessary. So let's take a look at what the bride will see when she receives her confirmation messages. We'll jump over to the bride's profile you'll see that we have two emails here. We have one which has already been sent, which is the confirmation message. And you'll see that we have a list of scheduled emails with the appointment reminder in it, which goes out one day before the appointment date. If we click on view next to the appointment that was sent, you'll see that we have an example of what this the most basic email shows and in this email there's two links the first one allows the bride to confirm her appointment which will actually confirm the appointment market is confirmed in your system that way you don't have to be calling people uh, who have already confirmed their appointment the next option she has is to cancel her appointment you want her to let you know as soon as possible if she's not able to make it so she has the option to click to cancel now, if you don't want any of these options in your email templates, feel free to go into the email template area and delete these from there. Brides do not have to have the ability to do these features, but a lot of folks uh, do want this. So we've gone ahead and included it in the sample email templates that are created when you signed up. So I've gone ahead and just clicked in my email and confirmed the appointment. So let's go back to the bride's profile and see her list of appointments, and let's check out the status. So you can see here that the status is pending and confirmed. That means that this, the appointment has not taken place, but the bride has confirmed that she will be there. And if we click on edit next to that, we'll see that the checkbox shows that it's been confirmed. Additionally, we're going to have a little notification pop in here at the very top that lets you know that the bride has confirmed her appointment and what the date and time was and who the bride was that, that confirmed it. If you click any of the links in there, clicking Jack Johnson will take you to Jack's profile. If uh, clicking on uh, the date and time will take you to the appointment itself. And if you look down below, you'll see where there's a thumbs up next to the appointment that indicates to you that this appointment has been confirmed. Not only that, you'll notice that the background color of the appointment on the calendar is not as transparent as it was before. It's more of a bold color. And that will tell you also that the appointment has been confirmed. And that concludes the Using the Calendar video.